Let's discover the Knowledge Smart Batch Edit tool. So the Batch Edit function available within the Knowledge Smart dashboard allows the offline editing and creation of questions using Microsoft Excel. It includes the ability to link questions to relevant learning content. The first thing that we need to highlight is that the batch edit functionality is only available for draft tests and questions. It does not work for the published Knowledge Smart off the shelf tests. Therefore, the starting point for downloading and offline editing of your questions is in the library menu, submenu draft content, and submenu draft tests. This green X icon here is the icon that you will select to then take your assessment export. Notice this pop-up menu here which highlights that only certain question types will be downloaded and made available for batch edit. Other question types must be edited using the normal question editing tools within the Knowledge Smart dashboard. It might be handy to know that these question types included in the batch edit function are actually the majority of question types that Knowledge Smart offers. Click OK. And then what you want to do is open up this file in Microsoft Excel. Now that you have your assessment details open in Excel, it is important to look at the different columns displayed. The first column is question type and these abbreviations are then for the different question types. So multiple choice, true or false, pick list, order list and so forth. The next column is the question ID. Now this is a column that you never want to edit because this will be used by the Knowledge Smart system to upload the uh, questions back in once you're done with your editing. You might notice some formatting tags displayed such as this, uh, this one here. It is important to retain these formatting tags because then your question wording and question summary and other text areas will automatically be formatted for you upon upload. If you omit these tags, then you should experience an error during the upload process. So it's important to keep the data architecture exactly the same. You can make any edits to the wording up here just keep within those formatting tags. Similarly with the question wording, if there was some changes that you wanted to bring about. Next up, let's take a look at category tags and training tags. So you will notice quite a lot of granularity in terms of the training tags listed against specific question names. So if you wanted to add an additional training tag, just enter a comma and then add your training tag there. Category tags are really important because they will help us manage our content and also find specific content within our assessment library easily later on. Category tags is also a very innovative way of reviewing assessment content. So let's take a look at this example here at the top where we have added in some unique category tags which is going to help us understand the review process of this assessment content. So there we've added a tag called approved for global use. We can see that our colleague Joe Smith has approved the content, Susan Black has approved and Brian Sanders has approved. You can also add in category tags per office location or per regional division or 
however you like to work. You are free to add in as many category tags as you need, just separate them with a comma. Next up, when you're looking at the answer information, you will notice that where a question involves multiple answer options, the correct answer will normally have this star next to it. So that is how we indicate to the Knowledge Smart system that this would be the correct answer. The next section of the assessment data is about precision marking with certain question types such as free text questions and it might be more feasible to make changes to these using the actual uh, draft question area. But here you can, for example, see that partial scoring has been applied to this specific question. So if you wanted to remove that, you could just change that from true to false. Next up, we can review the coaching text for the specific question. Make changes there if we want to. Too. And the last area that we are going to be looking at is learning links. So this is where I can add links to specific relevant training content based on that specific question topic. So here we can see that we've added in a link to an online video which we find is relevant. It could be a link to a document that is housed on your intranet or it could also just be text. So utilize the links to learning columns, which is learning text and learning links, to then create that link between the assessment and your training information. Last up, we can see that this specific question has been used in this specific module. So we can see how the uh, questions are grouped. And then we can, of course, look at the um, assessment names. So once I have made all my changes, at the bottom we can also utilize the blank space to add new questions. And in this case we will just leave the question ID blank. If you are planning to use the batch edit tool to add additional questions to your library, it is handy to know that when you hover over this question mark icon on the right hand side of the screen, you will find a lot of guidance here in terms of those abbreviations for the different question types, which columns to not populate, which columns are mandatory, guidance in terms of how to enter those category tags and training tags separated by a comma, further guidance on those other settings that you can apply on a batch or a scale level, and lastly, at the bottom here, very important guidance around character limits. So when you're creating new content, it's always good to read this first so that you try and stay within these limits. If you are simply using the batch edit tool to add new questions and you're not doing that during the edit phase, you can download a template here as well to populate with your new content. Now let's take a look at the workflow with uploading those edited questions back into the system. So we are in the main menu library, submenu draft content and submenu batch edit. Click in this white box here to then browse to that file that you've just saved. Next up, click Upload. Knowledge Smart will provide you with a quick review of the questions that are about to be imported. And once you're happy that everything is displayed as expected, you can click Import Questions at the bottom here. You will receive confirmation that your edited questions have been imported to a specific group. The group name will include a date stamp so that you can easily refer back to this content. Click OK. 
and then you will also see another link to view those specific questions that you've just imported. So here we can see our new group name and we can see the list of questions that we have edited. If we have a look at one question that we've just imported, we notice that the question ID is the same. So that means that any changes that you've made in your batch edit will be applied to your existing library. And we can look at that by going to our question tags and looking at additional question tags that we've perhaps added in during the editing process. And we can see that those changes are now being reflected inside the platform for us. As mentioned before, I might need to filter down to my free text questions just to come and make sure that I'm happy with the way those are being marked. So I just come over here to provide the answer and I can then review the settings around how those types of questions are being marked. So here we can see that this is a numeric question. I can apply some variance parameters to that answer and I can also incorporate a precision hint. So it's just easier to make these types of edits once you are back in the platform and you have re-imported your edited questions. So I think the batch edit tool will really help speed up um, how you review the content and also to make any small changes to perhaps a question name, question summary, question text, or perhaps the way a question answer is worded. So please feel free to reach out to us if you need additional support with the batch edit functionality.